What's up, guys, and welcome to the Tim Sports Talk. And today we're going to go ahead and get into what is my ideal offseason for our Washington football team. And it's going to be a fun one, all right? I've worked hard on this. I've looked really looked into it. And I think I have a good one. I think I have a good offseason, all right? Here we go. So right now we currently have around $35 million in cap space. So to start off our offseason, we're going to cut some people, all right? And you see it on the picture. And unfortunately, Alex Smith is going to have to go. But not until after June 1st. If we cut him before June 1st, we just save just under 15 mil. But if we wait until after June 1st to cut him, we can save up to $19 million. And that will be my first cut. John Bostic, bye-bye. You're out. Gone. That saves us $2.6 million. Troy Apke, we all know him, is out of here. Definitely gone. That'll save us another mil. So that gets me up to around $57, $58 million in cap space. I would also like to restructure Landon Collins somehow. If I could save any money there, that would be ideal. But right now, he being almost a $17 million cap hit is outrageous, especially coming off his injury and how he played last season. I would like to keep him because I'm only, even if I cut him post June 1st, I'm only going to save $8 million, And I think he's worth $8 million, but he's not worth $7 million. So hopefully we restructure him somehow to save even more. But we're going to base it off that $57 million number that I got for the rest of our team. Now. Let's get into our free agents. And the first one is obvious. We have to re-sign Brandon Sheriff. He's our best offensive lineman. He does have a little bit of injury concerns, but the dude's a beast. And he will fight through some injuries and play. So he is an awesome right guard. I would not like to have to pay him so much, but he's probably going to be around $15 million per year. And this year, I'm hoping to get him to an $11 million cap hit because you can progressively raise that as the contract goes on. And that way we keep our our uh, numbers low for this season. So $11 million cap hit for re-signing Brandon Sheriff. All right. Here's where the fun part begins. All right. And as I said, this is my ideal. This is like a wish list kind of thing. But hear me out. We fix the quarterback position with Dak Prescott. All right. Dallas Moves on, says, you know what? We can't figure out a contact situ situation with him. We have a decently high pick. We can go get our quarterback through the draft. We will let go of Dak Prescott. Why is this ideal? First of all, we don't have to trade any picks for him, okay? He's going to be a free agent now in this scenario, and we can just sign him straight to the team. What's the deal that I would give him? I would give him eight years. $240 million, 175 guaranteed. That's the real number that matters to these players is what is that guaranteed number? So I'm going to throw a huge number at him, $175 million, which is a lot of money, a whole lot of money. But in exchange, I get to the, get that per year number down a little bit so we can survive the cap hits. So that would be a $30 million cap hit per year, which is not something he would be happy with, but I'm hoping that $175 million guarantee entices him so it doesn't kill our cap space going forward so we can try to re-sign these defensive linemen in the future. But why is this also great? We are out of the QB, like, horrible desert wasteland that we've been in for so long. We have a quarterback now who's only about 26, I can't remember his age, like 26, 25, 27 years old, something like that under contract for eight seasons. We don't have to worry about it anymore. We get him under contract for long term and we're done. We don't have to worry about it no more. Wouldn't that be nice? We've been under quarterback duress for so long. This would be fantastic if we can get a long term quarterback who's a solid quarterback. Is he top five? No. Is he top 10? Probably. You know, Definitely top 15. Definitely a top half of the league quarterback. He's probably top 10. I, I like Dak Prescott, just not for $35, $40 million a year. All right. So, and then also uh, to fix the quarterback, I would also re-sign Taylor Heineke for a small deal as our backup around $3 million. 
just to get him in so we have a solid backup in case the injury to Dak Prescott lingers. We have a dude that we know that can come in and ball out for us. All right, so there's my quarterback position. Another position to need is a lot of people like Logan Thomas. I like him as my number two tight end, so I want to go out and sign Hunter Henry. This dude's a free agent, beast tight end, two-way tight end. He can block and pass catch, runs good routes, and I think we can get him around $10 million per year, and then this year, the cap hit number would be around $7 million. Oh, yeah, and for Dak, the cap hit number this year, it'll progressively go up, would be around twenty-two. All right? So Hunter Henry, a $7 million cap hit this season, $10 million per year. Get him for, like, four-year deal, $40 million, guaranteed, like, 32 35 of it. I think that could get it done, potentially, and that would be an awesome brought in tight end and we can have two tight end sets with him and Logan Thomas awesome duo gets another weapon for Dak Prescott I I don't see any downside really if we can get our hands on a Hunter Henry so another free agent all right another position that people aren't really thinking about but technically we have no kicker on the team right now and that is Young Ho Koo I may have pronounced that wrong I don't care dude is a really interesting prospect, okay? He was 91% successful on his PATs and 95% successful on his field goals. He only had two missed field goals. He went eight for eight for field goals over 50 yards. He doesn't seem to have the biggest leg in the world. His longest field goal is only a 54, but he's extremely accurate. Also, the dude's a freaking fantastic onside kick. Uh, He had three successful onside kicks in a row for Atlanta. One of them got called back because of the, uh, the one of his guys went off sides, but he right came right back, got another one, and then they scored, and he got a third one to keep them alive in the game. So the dude can knows how to kick onside kicks. The guy's super accurate at kick, making field goals, and he he does an okay job of kicking the touchbacks. As, as I said, he doesn't have the strongest leg in the world. He's around fifty percent touchback percentage. But he could kick it high and give enough hang time to get our coverage downfield. I like him. I, I I really would like to see him in a burgundy and gold uniform. Young Hu Ku for kicker. And then, of course, we have to re-sign our long snapper, long time long snapper. No problems. You never hear about him. You may not even know who he is. Nick Sunberg. Awesome long snapper, really, really good at his job. Resign him for a cheap deal, one year, and I think we can get a kicker for two million. Okay, it's not like kickers are absolutely outrageous amount. Throws two million dollars at Young Ho Ku, and we have a nice kicker instead of Dustin Hopkins. All right, so that's my free agency list. All right, that's my ideal free agency right here, right there. That should total us around forty-six million. That would leave eleven million dollars left to sign our rookies. Also. If we can restructure Landon Collins at all, that just adds to sign our rookies, which would be nice. All right, let's go ahead and get into our rookies. All right, here we go. So we have the 19th overall pick. All right. And this this is a little bit of a dream, but there's a lot of hoopla saying this guy is falling in the draft, and this dude is a phenom, and that is Micah Parsons. All right, they're saying he's going to fall. Right now, he's all the way down to New England. If this guy can somehow fall down to 19 overall, as I said, this is my ideal. I want this guy. We have the defensive setup with leadership and just good overall moral dudes with Jonathan Allen, Montez Sweat, Chase Young, Deron Payne, Cameron Curl, Cole Holcomb. The list goes on, as well as Jack Del Rio and uh, Ron Rivera. I believe we have the defense that we could bring this young man in with a lot of off-the-field issues and get his head right and have a successful career. And this could be Ron Rivera's Luke Keekley. I know other people have talked about it. I, th- this would be a fantastic, fantastic move because our weakness this past year was the linebacker spot. It, our linebackers were atrocious. Tom and da- Thomas Davis is a million years old. John Bostic is garbage. It, it was bad in the linebacker spot. This guy immediately walks into the center of your defense and gives that 4-3 defense, that middle linebacker, it desperately needs. So that's my round one. On to round two. Number 51 overall. 
Notice in my free agency, I did not re-sign Ronald Darby. I know a lot of Skins fans want to re-sign him, and he didn't play bad, but I just couldn't quite fit it in to my cap space. So my second round pick would be Sean Wade from Ohio State. This dude seems to be a really solid cover corner. He could do zone and man-to-man. I, I like him, okay? He's a really interesting guy. He did get toasted up a little bit by Devontae Smith in the uh, championship game, but who didn't all year long get toasted by Devontae Smith, right? But this guy was all over the place. I like him. He Ohio State produces really good corners throughout the years. Second round pick. I know PFF has this guy rated as their number three corner off the board. Getting a, the number three corner off the board and 51 overall, I think a really good spot for us and fills a need to get alongside Kendall Fuller. There's our corners for the year. On to number three. This guy is another guy that's been falling in the draft. He's been as high as a late first round, very consistent second, but some people have him falling into the third. And that's Dylan Moses, all right? And this guy is another guy, six foot three, 235 pounds, great quickness, 4.6, sorry, 4.4640. The guy has some speed, good closing speed, good tackler, well coached, obviously, in Alabama, that defense. Uh, I like it, all right? And we watched the the playoff games, and he didn't really flash off your screen, but this guy in the third round I think is a steal. And as I said, one of our big weaknesses was linebacker. And it's kind of weird, right, because our offense was our weakness, but I really fixed our offense in free agency, right? So I'm continuing to hammer home that defense, make sure that is a top-five unit for next season moving forward, give Dak Prescott – a guy that can get their offenses off the field. You get back on, run the ball, play good, solid offense. Team ball, right? Just team ball. That's what I'm looking for. So another defensive pick. Now, we have two third-round picks. Let's go ahead and get into our next third-round pick. And it is a dude that brings a whole new definition of the word eat. He eats people, man. He loves his pancake blocks. He will go in with extra syrup and just freaking smash dudes. We watched this guy in the college playoffs, and he was so fun to watch. Pulling guard, doing everything. He is six foot four, 340 pounds, and the dude is not actually that slow. He's not obviously not fast at that size, but the dude can move even though he's got tons of weight. But that's what you need, man. Good guards are nice anchors, good solid human beings. The dude could probably stand to lose about 15 pounds, gain some muscle, good speed. But, dude, this guy is a freaking monster inside. And we've had a problem at the left guard spot for years, okay? Wes Switzer came in and did a decent job this year, but we have had a hole there. This guy can come in and fill it. Left guard, Deontay Brown. All right, so that's my third, my second third. On to the fourth spot. Here's a guy that can fix our free safety spot. No more Troy Apke. Cameron Curl is strong safety. We probably have uh, Landon Collins be some sort of like hybrid linebacker safety guy that's more inside the box. We could bring him in on dime packages or something. I don't know. Maybe not dime. I don't know. Some spot where we could have a Landon Collins inside the box and not so much a safety anymore. I think he's too small to be a true linebacker, but I think there's a spot for him on the field as a hybrid of sorts, kind of put him in there in the box on the outsides. So this guy, though, can be our true free safety. He's got great range. He's got good play recognition. I've seen him on highlights where he doesn't get fooled by, like, the trick plays and the uh, receivers going down. He gets interceptions on those kind of plays. The dude is really smart, really good, solid safety. And he's projected anywhere from third to fifth round. This Him in the fourth round, I think, is a great spot for him. Fixes a need. Caden Stearns, our fourth round pick. All right, and that brings me to our fifth round pick. And I know it's a spot that all of you guys are wondering. You, you didn't address it in free agency. You didn't address it early in the draft. What are we going to do with our second wide receiver spot? Here he is, Dez Fitzpatrick. Great hands. He's six foot two, 200, about five pounds, but he's running a sub 4 4 40. This guy could be a steal in the fifth round. He had a great senior bowl, and he's another guy projected anywhere in that four to sixth round range. Hopefully, he's there in the fifth. As I said, this is my ideal 
this guy could definitely be our number two or even our number three if Kelvin Harmon can come back healthy. We have Terry McLaurin, Kelvin Harmon, now Des Fitzpatrick. I like it, all right? This guy can ball. You can see it. Go watch him in the Senior Bowl. He's made great catches all over the place. Got to love me some Des Fitzpatrick. Now, we don't have a sixth-round pick. We do have two seventh-round picks, and I didn't go too deep into, like, what I really would want there. I think I would want a pass rusher. I don't know who, but some sort of late-round guy that maybe could be a rotational pass rusher for us. I know we're not desperate for one, but a big thing about defense is rotational guys, and we're losing Ryan Kerrigan to spell Montez Sweat and Chase Young. So maybe we could get a guy out of the seventh round that maybe could be some sort of rotational guy, see, like, you know, 15 snaps a game, 12 snaps a game that could give us some good minutes. And also another position was we go ahead and throw another seventh round pick into some sort of late round receiver with good speed that could be a slot guy for us. And that would be my draft. And there I have it. There's my ideal off season for the Washington football teams. I fix my quarterback. I fix my linebacker. I fix my free safety. Um, my Wide receivers, I'm not desperate about. I think we have some decent ones in-house, and getting another one in the fifth round is not a big deal. We fix our tight end spot. We get another lineman at the uh, left guard spot. Our defense stays a top five, maybe even a number one defense overall with this draft. What do you guys think? You guys let me know in those comments. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Also, there's a Discord link in the description. You can hop in there, talk some football with us. And last but not least, there are donation links in the description. If you feel so kind, you could donate there. But yeah, this is my offseason. I, I, I think it's fun. I, I'm, you know, I've been somewhat realistic as far as the cap space. Uh, I've been realistic as far as you know, certain spots in the draft. And th there's potential here. There's potential that we can actually get everything that I just said on this piece of paper. Is it 100% likely? No. Is it possible? Absolutely. But you guys let me know what you guys think. What's your ideal free agency or off season for our team? Let me know. And until next time. See ya.